Hey everybody, uh, nice to see so many familiar faces. Um, really quick, my internet seems to be quite spotty, so if I disappear for 30 seconds, I should reappear, I hope. Uh, right, so I, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about um, visualization of data using a very easy um, open source executable called Gephi. Um, just curious for the people whose screens are on, how many of you have not used Gephi before? Okay, so this might be somewhat useful. Um, it's really cool if you're trying to visualize data that um, we're looking at the relationships between objects or items. So for example, similarity data or coincidence data, um, it's really built for that. It's also very nice pedagogically. Um, so you know, all of us, uh, I guess right now are teaching kind of arts data courses at some point, and it's very nice as an introduction to networks and visualization of, of coincidence data or similarity data. Uh, where they don't have to start with programming. They start with a front-end open source GUI, uh, and then from there they can start coding. You can, you can then get them using it via Python or, or you know, whatever language you, you like to work in. So you can see here, I've shared the screen that's the, the source page for downloading Gephi. Uh, so what is Gephi? It's, it's a graphing program essentially, and it, just, it depends on what kind of graph you want to, you want to create. So you know, for example, we're accustomed to seeing graphs like the three you see on the left here. So there's hierarchical clustering in the top left. That's really canonical. And there's lots of programming languages and software um, for, for creating those sorts of uh, tree estimation visualizations. And then there's additive clustering below it, something we don't use as often. It makes fewer assumptions about the, uh, the nature of the data than hierarchical clustering. And then the one on the bottom left is a network where it actually permits uh, edges or relationships between many possible nodes instead of just two. So it's even less rigid, if you like. So you probably, if you haven't ever heard of Gephi, I would guess you've done hierarchical clustering before, and I would guess you've probably done additive clustering before, because those are the most canonical, because they make the most rigid assumptions about how the data should be structured and shaped. And then networks are very free, uh, with lots of free parameters, so they're a little harder to estimate, and it requires you know, more processing power, et cetera. This is why Gephi is, is quite useful. Uh, so you can download it here. Or you can go to, um, they have a GitHub page and you can download the source files. Um, they also have many examples of data sets that you can, you can play with to just get to know Gephi. I use a couple of them in, in my seminars because the students, you know, there are many non-musical examples of, of building large networks of data um, that get the students excited. And then from there, you can move it into symbolic music or whatever it is that you, you're teaching them. Okay, so uh, let me just do a quick tutorial on Gephi. Um, First of all, what does the data look like that Gephi wants to read? Well, okay, so I cheated just like uh, has been just discussed by Nat, uh, which is, so I wrote a script that would parse a data set and then output the kind of data that, uh, that this program Gephi would like to see. Um, I'm happy to share that script. It's in MATLAB, which is yet another language that I think most people don't use. Um, but so what you can see here is uh, four columns. So the first column is the source, the second column is the target. So it's just two objects and uh, how many times one goes to the other. So this, in this case, is the billboard data set. So for example, we have the G major chord going to a D major chord 1,004 times. Uh, and then I also just have another column that's the piece count. So how many pieces have the relationship between G major and D major occurring adjacently or continuously on the surface? So it's kind of like dealing with n-gram data in this case. I'm just counting up things and then making what's called an adjacency matrix. Um, uh, which is just these four columns, and really just three columns of this goes to this, and this is how many times it happens. That's what Gephi wants. So if, it, it could be similarity data. It could be from zero to one, one being, you know, they're completely identical, and zero being they're totally dissimilar. It just depends on what kind of data you're dealing with. So, okay, let's go back to Gephi. So this is actually just the file that, um, that I've just shown you imported into Gephi. There are three windows at the top left, the overview window, the data lab, and the preview. So I'll show you the data lab first. Here you can actually see this is the nodes list. So what I've been talking about with objects is we'll call them nodes in graph theory nomenclature. We have a node that's G major, for example, and how many nodes are there? That's just how many unique types, you know, in this case, how many chord types do we have in our data set? Um, we also have an edges list. So here we, we see, here's the source, here's the target. This is actually the CSV file I was just showing you that I created with another programming language to create the data. So you have G major going to D major. This is called a directed network because say G to D will happen a thousand times, but D going back to G might only happen 800 times, right? So we call this a directed network. 
and then over here we have our weight. So this is how many times G went to D, since in this case I'm dealing with counts. Uh, okay, so let me go over to nodes. The first thing I'm going to do, this is just a little Gephi thing, is I'm going to tell Gephi, hey, make the label the name of the ID, the ID column here. So I've just told it, call G major, G major when I look at the network. So now I'll go over to the overview, and here's where we start building the network. Right now it's created a randomized layout. So it's just all the, all the nodes or the core types with, with the edges being how often they go to one another, but there's, there's nothing else being displayed. There's no analysis being done. Well, there are many different layout algorithms that Gephi uses and that many network software programs use. Um, the most common one is called Force Atlas, uh, or at least it's one of the more conventional ones. If you start doing network analysis, you'll run into Force Atlas pretty quickly. So there are many parameters that you can deal with. So the, the, the center pane is just giving us the network visualization. The top left is gonna give us data about the network that we can manipulate. The bottom left is gonna give us the layout algorithm. And then on the, on the right here, we have filters and statistics so we can throw out things in the network as we go, and we can calculate statistics about the network as we go. Uh, so what I'll do here, since I'm dealing with the billboard data set, is I'll start by creating a network, and I'll run these parameters. I'll let you kind of read about the various algorithms, you know, Force Atlas or um, Open Ord is another famous one. Um, but here I know that this is a good set of parameters for just starting to build the network. So now I'm running it. This is dealing with big data. So depending on your operating system, this can take a very long time, a very short time. So I just told it, start trying to build this network. And the algorithm will just keep going and going and going until I tell it to stop. Um, so I'll back up here and let this and try to keep sort of being able to see the entire network um, as it grows. Eventually, I'll be happy and I'll say, I think the nodes are barely moving. They're barely changing their position. So I'll stop at some point. Um, so let's say right now I'm happy, I'm gonna hit stop. What are the kinds of things that I might do to sort of get to know the network and get to know the data? By the way, there are two different ways of thinking about these kinds of network analysis software tools. One is exploratory, one is confirmatory to think back to statistician John Tukey. So often when I'm using the software, I'm thinking about it in a very exploratory way. I'm trying to get to know a lot of data and look for patterns. And then you can also use it in a confirmatory way where you have a specific set of five chord types that you want to look at or four patterns that are more or less similar to one another and you just want to visualize those in a much smaller network. Right now I'm looking at all of the chord types going to all other possible chord types, the complete two grams of the billboard data sets. There's a lot of data here to stare at. Okay, so what are some, uh, what, what's a, the next thing that I might do? Um, from here I'm going to mess with the size of the nodes. Right now all the nodes are the same size, but they could actually communicate something about the structure of the network. So if I go over here, I'll calculate a statistic called aided, uh, average weighted degree. So there are edges and nodes. The node is the, the, the chord type, and the edge is how often it goes to some other chord type. Right? So I can change this to say, make the node size reflect how the, its average weighted counts of all those edges it goes away from and comes back to. Right? So some nodes will be very central and some uh, less central. And I want to calculate that uh, as, or I want that to reflect, be reflected in the size of the node. So I've gotten that statistic, uh, and now I can go over here to appearance and start affecting the network with the statistic. Um, so in this case, I'm going to say let's affect the size, and I'll do it based on some form of ranking, and this is weighted degree. I'll hit apply. In fact, let me change these numbers. And apply, and there we go. Okay, now we see lots of differences in node sizes, reflecting how many um, times chords go to them or they go back to other chords. Right? Now, every time you do some kind of change to the visualization, you need to rerun um, the, the layout algorithm. So I'll click this box that says adjust by sizes and run again. And now it's going to sort of move around the network to accommodate these uh, very, very important chord types and less important chord types get pushed to the edges. Again, once I'm happy, I'll hit stop. Maybe I want to get the labels for these chords. So I'll say, you know, put in the labels and maybe I'll back off on the size. Okay, so now I'm giving myself some information where I can stare at and go, hey, look, these really important nodes seem to be reflecting the line of fifths, right? So if I stare at this enough, I can start to see a line from E flat to B flat to F. C and so on. What other things can we do? We could filter out. This is a very complex network. Actually, it's not by data science 
uh, perspective, but from our perspective, it looks quite complex. So I could go over here and, and filter out, and there are many different ways to filter. What would be one way? Well, I'll go to this uh, thing called topology and pick degree range. So what this means is throw out all the core types that are so rare that they, they have nothing going to them. They're extremely rare. They only, they only go to some other chord once or twice or, or vice versa. So I'll change this uh, so that I'll throw out anything that doesn't have an edge of at least 15, an edge coming to it that is at least 15 or, or, or going away from it. So this shrinks my network some. I again, can rerun the algorithm. Um, it's a network, which is just like any other kind of tree estimation. Um, so why I say that is we might want to do something like community detection. So often we encounter stuff like this because we're doing clustering. We want to know are there clusters in the data, right? Well, they call this community detection and network theory. So uh, this program can do that. We can go back to statistics and, and run this thing called modularity. Um, it's detected six communities. Uh, so I can go over here uh, and color code my data by its communities. So I'll hit apply. And now I get to start to see some clusters in my, in my network and figure out what's going on. Um, so often when I teach, when I use this program in class, we'll start with a really small network of like five nodes. We'll run it and we'll under sort of we'll get to get a sense of the math of it. Then I'll run a big complex network so that we can sort of, after we get an, an understanding of the intuitions of it, we can then apply it on a much larger scale to more complex data. Last thing I'll say, so from there you can go to the preview window and you can actually export these visualizations. So what's nice about um, Gephi is that it creates really nice looking visualizations and then it exports them in lots of um, nice file types. So it can do uh, vector graphics, SVG or PDF. It can uh, do a raster based image, you know, it can do PNG what have you. Uh, and there's lots of um, parameters that you can adjust to make a network that you like. So for example, I just threw this together earlier this morning. This is the network I've just been playing with, but me trying to visualize it and sort of get to know my data. Um, maybe the last thing I'll say finally is what's annoying about Gephi from a coding perspective is I would rather code this so that I know that I'm get this, gonna get the same network every time. Well, you can do that. So the first thing to say is that uh, here's an R package for exporting your data, for parsing data, and then exporting it to Gephi. Um, here's a MATLAB uh, function for doing the same thing. Here is a Python package for doing the same thing. Also, Gephi has created its own ribbon or console for actually coding in Python in Gephi. So you can write your Python script, then it'll create the network based on that script. So there are a lot of options for being able to take it and make it a, a sort of more coding friendly rather than just playing with the GUI. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave it there, I guess. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know.